So this is going to be a short video showing you how to take the Studio 5000 emulator, which is right up top. We're going to actually show you how to take that emulator and make a processor and tie it in and download your PLC file to that and get it working, right? So get all of that working all in one setting. Now we've, and this is going to be a short video, but I've done this many, many different times in, you know, longer tutorial videos and stuff of that nature. But again, I want to make a short video showing you how to make, tie that in to your processor, download your PLC file to it, right? So you take one and have the other and then link everything together and that way you have a full process working. Now again, I'm gonna do this with Easy PLC's Machine Simulator and that way you actually, because a lot of people have requested that I use uh, real machines. So I can't really use a real machine in the real world because of the simple fact of proprietary natures of machinery and uh, manufacturing. So what I did is we, we 3D made machines and stuff of that nature so we can actually show you real world scenarios. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to this. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we notice um, this is gonna be one I've done in the past, right? So if you look up and you can see, right? This is one I've done in the past. This is the Easy PLC's box uh, measuring system. This is using slot five. Okay, so I can do that. I can come over here, go to properties, and I can use, uh, I can tell my version that I'm currently running. My processor type is going to be emulate, right? So emulate uh, 5570, right? So this is a Studio 5000 emulate controller, right? I can change the controller if I wanted to. I can easily just change that and change it back to a regular processor right if I wanted to so I can simulate the process simulate the code and get it running on this other software right and test it and then take it and change it if I want to although we're not going to do that right here we're just going to show you how to tie everything in so it's using slot 5 now currently if you look in my um, studio 5000 emulate I don't have a processor right I don't have a processor whatsoever so I'm gonna click right here I'm gonna hit create I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick my module type. Now you can simulate I/O. Again, we've shown that in prior videos. But again, when it comes down to it, we're just going to make our controller, right? We're going to pick an emulate 5570 controller. We're going to add that in. Um, you're not going to come up with a uh, spot that generally, if you have not done this before, that says, uh, you know, do you want to use the existing or previous one? I deleted it so that I could show you this. Um, you're probably going to have this come out from scratch so let's reset the values okay so we're going to reset the values what I want to do is make sure my, my version lines up with my PLC program that's all I want to do now you do have to have the actual correct version of studio 5000 emulate um, in our case uh, we have several different versions so we're going to use version 31 in this case now you can change your memory size if it is a bigger program that's going to be running and so that you don't fault out your virtual memory you want to make sure you expand that memory um, in most cases I just go ahead and expand it anyway because it doesn't hurt anything you have the processing capability I'm using a VM you can easily see that I'm using uh, VMware 16 currently right now so what I'm saying is you have the processing power why not use it and uh, then you're gonna click next and then just keep everything else default at this point in time and then you click that so then you have your processor right so the processors added so what we've done is we've taken that our processor was in slot 5 right over here we've downloaded that in or we've actually added our processor so now we have the ability to download so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to communications who active now here's the kicker if you don't have all of your drivers in here, um, make sure you open up RS Links and you go to your driver, add your configured driver, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add in, like say for instance, this is going to be a virtual backplane. So this would be your, uh, up here, your driver, you would pick your virtual backplane. It's like a soft logics, right? So that's what you're gonna choose. That's what I've added right here, and if you see, you can see all the ones that I've had in the past that I've deleted for this video so I can show you how exactly to set this thing up easily and properly. So the V uh, AB underscore VBP, that's what's gonna come in as if you just, just you don't name it, you just come in as a default, right? So this is gonna be your virtual backplane. That's what we're gonna download to. So again, if you need to add that driver, just come up here, add the driver. Um, you just come over here, add the driver as new. I already have it, so I don't have to add it. 
again I could delete it and add it and show you but again that it's just the same thing as, as what I just said it's a click of a mouse right so you want to make sure you use that ABVBP driver right and then we're going to go to slot 5 which is the one we chose right version 31 we added our processor and then we're just going to I personally what I like to do is I like to go online and then download now a lot of people have preferences to this and they would like to just go ahead and download but there is sometimes an issue with like emulation or stuff like that where you your processor might get stuck depending upon your configuration of your processor let me show you this your processor configuration right here if this is set in the, the startup mode is in program a remote program you're gonna see that now you can do last state sometimes you'll win like that if you if you shut down your processor in last state so I like to change this to last state and then when I do that what I can do is actually come over here go online and then when I when I go online what I'm gonna do is actually make sure I have good conductivity to that and then I'm just gonna hit download as simple as that I'm gonna download to my actual processor now and what this is gonna do you're gonna see it actually on the very top left hand corner you're gonna see this you're gonna see the remote program so I can change this right here to re remote run right now right just that simple and there we are we have our program downloaded we have everything active um, let's start up our easy PLC machine simulator and let's actually get this machine running I mean why not right uh, again this is a software suite that I've talked quite a bit about um, so if you want to actually see that there's a playlist about that in this shit this actual channel um, so this one is going to be I actually have to look for it myself this is the measuring one um, this is one of the more fun ones I did because the simple fact that it used analogs to you know measure a box and the distance of the box was then inverted um, and then using a negate function and then we basically uh, did the robot pick in place from that uh, and then it moved and you know chose the box if it went to a you know basically a a reject or it went to a successful place right for depending on the on the size so let's go to drivers and we're gonna load in our driver so let's open up our driver I'm sure I have this so this is the measuring driver okay so let's go ahead and start this up all right so currently we're going to go to uh, start driver right here as soon as we have our communication let's go and do ourselves one more favor come over here and let's go over to our DDE OPC make sure we have a good conductivity okay so it says measure we have good conductivity uh, the system is actually running right now so apparently we had the start button actually running um, so I did not know I had the system started at that point in time but apparently it was already in state 14 so it is currently uh, it was waiting on the start button but apparently we already had the when we downloaded it, it was already in that state point of it is uh, that's something that you could actually fix and say hey no matter what if you download first scan go into state zero and we can actually add that in there as well um, but again I wanted to show you a simple way and you can see this machine running side by side if you wanted to if I could like take the code and highlight the code over here you can see I've, I actually showed this this video how I built this um, in that playlist so if you wanted to see how I built this the way the code works um, everything really 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 kind of a detailed layout of how things work you can see that so uh, what it does is comes in here it measures the box off of the photo I right here comes in the, the robot will come in there and get the the position and then take it and extend it out so the basically there's two analog values um, and you'll come in here and you'll see that so right now these analog values if I swap over here to analog you'll see these analog values the measured and the distance it's going to actually travel to pick that box up is actually in there so uh, long story short I just wanted to get a simple little video to just show you how to connect your studio 5000 emulate and again this could be rs logics emulate i'm showing you the best practices that i use um i did talk about like shutting it down okay so if i shut it down let me just restart this program uh so that we don't actually you know keep a, a emulated machine running 
Uh, so let's shut, shut it down and I'll show you. What I do is I actually come over here and throw it in program mode, right? Remote program. And then that's when this would be that last state that emulate configure or that emulate uh, properties. That last state was, well, no matter when, when I start it back up, it's always going to be in a healthy state. That's what I like to do. That's my preference. And again, but this is all based upon how your software was installed and, and if it's installed with everything correctly. So just make sure that, you know, you use best practices that you see. And if they work for you, work, let them work. If they, if you find something easier to work, then, then, then let, you know, use that. I mean, but again, when it comes on to it, we're just showing you videos that teach you the best practices that work for us, right? We're not teaching you, you know, the definite tried and true way to do things easier way to do things things that are known practices yes um but is there something easier for you i have no idea you, you know when you do this and you actually you know go through the process and you see that you're going to see things and, and tips and tricks that you learn that might help your process speed up and you know be better so with all that said we'll see you guys on the next one